Hello and welcome to the Humans Over Numbers podcast, the show that's willing to stand on its head to see the workplace from a new perspective. As you may have heard, we are sponsored by Milestone. So the company that provide the Beyond This Day and Small Wonders keepsakes, as well as other gifts to help you recognize uh, family or employees for major life events that happen both at work and personally as well. You can actually request a sample for you and your colleagues to take a look at. No cost and no obligations on their website, milestonescompany.com. All right. I'm Felix Dusablon. Hungry bookworm and aspiring polymath. I'm Brooke Albert, new mommy and self-proclaimed nerd. So today we're going to be talking about instructions. <laughs> we laugh because this is really about people not following instructions. And it's just something that we realize is a big thing it, everywhere. It's like, common. It's, just, it's, it's very common. People, and if you don't believe me, just think about this for a second. One of the last times you gave instructions, how clearly or how closely were they followed? Exactly. Uh, well, and so one of the things that pop up in everybody, you'll hear different opinions on this. Mm -hmm. But when you see lane closed 500 feet on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> That's an exact example. Oh my and God. And then people just keep chugging and they're not slowing down. They're not looking for a chance to get over. My husband will argue it is safer for you to go one, 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 like a zipper. Right. The zipper method, but the that's not what's happening. Makes sense. They're going to the end. But they get to the end <sighs> and they park there. And then you have to, you know, there's three cars that come in, but you had people who were merged previously. So it's like, okay, when are instructions important and why should people follow them? Why aren't people following them? Right. Ooh. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, there's like two things happening and I'm not sure which one it is. And like this example, sometimes people blatantly will not follow instructions. That, I guess I understand. Kind of shame on you, but I guess you're being a little rebel. The, the road example, I think, is mostly people blatantly not following. It's not that they didn't see it. It's not that they don't understand they're just like, I'm going to go to the I end. I think it's based on previous experience, having driven for however long. Mm -hmm. You kind of figure out what works best for your driving style. Mm -hmm. For me, it's when I get to the 250 feet, unless I see there's a ton of traffic, and then I'm going to try to get over as quickly as possible, because I don't want to be the person who's trying to squeeze in right before the construction work happens. Right. That's, and that's, that's the person that's like, the annoying one is the one, like, they hold up all the traffic. And then, like, everyone has to slow down to let the people in who don't have any more re room to, like, go. And so now everyone's stuck, funneled at well, the and then Well, and then both lanes start to back up, right? Which is why my husband argues it's, like, one, one. You slow down to let the one vehicle that's over in this lane get over when you see the things start to happen. Mm -hmm. And you know what? That would be absolutely fantastic if that was the way that it worked. And I'm someone who, like, <laughs> when I see that sign, I get over. But I'm also the person who... If I know the roads, I always get in the lane I know I'm going to leave it out. <laughs> Most of the time, I'm like, I just don't want to change lanes. I'm like lazy like that. So like when I go home from work today, I'll just, I'm going to get in the same lane. I know it will take me all the Dude, way. They, I'm like, I, it's one of the reasons why I hate using Google Maps as I drive. I always look up what the route is going to be before I start driving. Um, that yeah, Part of that difference. comes from yeah. my, 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 my background and knowing what a Rand McNally is, but if I know what the true, if I know like you're gonna take a left at this road and then a right at this road and this is kind of the lanes that it looks like, I'll pull it up on Google Maps like satellite view and see that's like got two lanes, so I need to be in the left lane, and then have just that audio reminder of what I need to be doing. It's a lot more commitment. I mean, I don't, I don't pull up that much stuff, but well, because I, I'm just, I, I guess it's because I'm a fearful. Like I don't want it happened to me yesterday. Um, she's like, make a U-turn and turn right. But what she really meant was when you're you're just turning left. Wow. Yeah, right? And so I make the U-turn and turn right, and I'm like, I was... So I had to go up and then make a U-turn and come back so that I could just turn left, you know. Um, and I thought, but I panicked because she said, make a U-turn and turn right instead of just turn left like I thought it was supposed to, and there wasn't signs. So, um, Anyways, so this actually... We digress, but this actually... <laughs> this brings us back to the point, though, in some ways, is... Uh, People either blatantly don't follow it because they just don't want to or they don't understand. And when they don't understand, it's either one of two things. The person communicating it or the person receiving the communications. And this is where both there are frustrations on both ends. Yeah. Bad communicating, bad writing, or giving instructions. You turn and turn right 
Like, why? Why would you, like, that instruction sound? Well, you would think it was, it, it was so weird. That's why I'm like, how is this? Because when you look at it, it's this huge U-turn space, right? It's mm-hmm. a four-lane road, and there's this huge U-turn space, and I'm turning into a parking lot that's basically perpendicular to this U-turn space. U-turn space. So I'm thinking with a U-turn and turn right, it would either be up the road a little bit after you make the U-turn, or it would be up the road. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it wouldn't be immediately right there where you're basically just turning left. Yeah. Because if you make a U-turn and turn right, you're going to go into, like, the int- the the exit of this opening to the parking lot. All right. Anyways, for people who are not <laughs> as, like, <laughs> mentally able to picture large con- construction for streets. On the, so, yes, there are definitely instances where communication is bad to give these instructions. Without a doubt. And that's where, where one of my frustrations is. Uh, I do definitely have frustration with this. I am someone who, I used to be an English teacher. I used to study English um, as a minor, and I studied biology, so I studied the science. So I learned how to write, and how to write concise. And then I also did some like acting stuff, so I learned how people speak, which you would probably not tell because of how wandery my speaking is now. I've gotten very undisciplined with my rhetoric and speech patterns but on any account i learned that there are very definite ways to be clear and concise in how you state things and make them understandable for example i am a huge advocate for using bullet points and numbers to help people follow instructions i am very very clear about that a lot i like pictures too yeah i like pictures a lot (laughs) and it's not a lot of effort and it's not tremendously difficult to write these things but my goodness yeah I, I used to i worked in the lab briefly and i actually wrote protocols like that was part of what i did in my lab was like i wrote how to use the machine like the microtone and stuff i'm like how to slice mouse heart even smaller here's the instructions yes i i we i, I wrote the instructions on how to slice up mouse hearts really small um so I learned that skill. So it's actually a pet peeve of mine when I see really badly written instructions. And I'm not talking about like Ikea instructions. Ikea instructions, I think, are actually really well written. I've never had a problem with Ikea instructions. I have never either. I know people are constantly complaining about that, but Ikea but instructions also, are really good. We also have to remember that people have problems with recipes. Yeah, that was the like other thing. cooking? I, yeah, when I, I took chemistry and I was like, look, this is literally just like following the instructions. Cooking with stuff. Like cooking. And someone's like, uh. And I was like... Oh my goodness, come now, on. Now, I have had, I will admit, I've had a derp moment where I was making cookies for the boyfriend at the time and uh, read two and a quarter cups of flour. Uh-huh. And my brain said two quarter, two quarter cups. quarter cups of flour. So I was like, why would you not just put a half? And then I was like, whatever, and made it and put it in the oven and it all melted and then it dawned on me like... Oh. Oh, yeah. No, okay. So <laughs> to be a little bit patient with that, yes, I get it. And chemistry was actually something I really struggled with, partially because the instructions for chemistry labs are ridiculously complicated. Yeah, but I was good at chemistry. I was a chemical engineer major. I was horrible at chemistry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was really good at my bio labs. And this was while I was taking my chem courses. It just for some, that day. And I, and uh, so now I give a look, some some grace, like, okay. But we've all messed up on recipes and stuff, and we've all had derp moments. I can't think of my example right now, but my goodness, I've had some derp moments. I've I've definitely done some weird stuff while cooking. I'd be like, hmm, that doesn't go there. <laughs> or uh, even with the lawnmower that we have, we have an electric lawnmower, and you have to push the button and then pull the bar. Mm-hmm. Which is almost the exact opposite of the previous lawnmower that we had, which was pull the bar, push the button. Well, okay. Right, it's it's just the exact That's opposite unusual. pattern, right? So you you know I have to look at my husband and like I have to sit there for a minute and be like, what if one of these two combinations of movements is gonna make this work? <laughs> yeah, I mean most people have like we all have dirt moments. Like you're gonna think I'm an idiot. I often forget which in my hands is left and right. <laughs> I, They'll be like, use your right one, and I'll be like, ah. <laughs> Uh, with like right clickers, oh my goodness, I can't stand when people say use the right clicker because then I'm like, click with my dominant <laughs> finger, just left click. And they'll be like, they'll be like, like right click, and I'll be like, oh, I'm right clicking. 
And I'm like, no, you idiot. And I'm like, I am an idiot. Well, so, so mistakes happen when you're trying to follow instructions. We get that. But there's just like, there's instances where you'll even get, you'll get instructions that you're going to get instructions and you just completely ignore the fact, like, like, mm -hmm. hey, you're going to get an so email that tells you how to do this. Okay. So like there's, there are, people are so bad at instructions and this is, I, th I remember back when I was teaching, we had a, uh, we had an event, like a group thing before all the teachers met up and like the principals there and such. And we, this was before students arrived. It was like the week before. And we were all supposed to introduce ourselves because we've got some new staff. And so we did this thing called B-side. So B-side of an album is when you flip an album and there's the lesser known facts, lesser known songs on the B-side of an album. It's called a B-side. So we were doing lesser known fun facts about ourselves. And so the person was like, okay, there's, there's like a hundred of us teachers and other staff here. So you're going to do your B-sides. B-sides going to be quick, fun things, fun things about yourself. Do it in two sentences or less roughly. Right. First person gets up, stands up, and then just goes on a little tirade about having kids and the fact that they have a whole bunch of kids. And then it's a while and they finally sit down and then the next person stands and does the same thing. And it's like... That's not two sentences. It's not two it's, sentences and that's not even the fun uh, fact. Like, what are you doing? And then the teacher, as, as, the principal reminded everyone that's what they were doing. And people ignored it. And people ignored it and they went straight back to it. And I was like... They just put a lot of really misplaced colons and semicolons to make that two sentences. That's all that happened. No, they were they not run on, bad, they weren't run on sentences. They had bad They grammar. were many sentences. <laughs> they were lots of sentences. And I was like, hey, what are you doing? So like I stood up and I was like, my family is Canadian and I like Star Wars or something. And I sat down and I was like, there, that's two sentences. 16. That's how you do it. But I'm like, goodness gracious. It just frustrates me so much. Like, that that instance, like, the whole time and everyone was going, and I was like, this is taking 40 minutes. It was supposed to be like a three-minute thing. Yeah, that would have been one, one that sentence. That was one sentence. But, like, they, like, two sentences or less, and I was like, ooh. I'm just, ooh. I, I'm... It frustrates me. I, and, it, like, I saw that stuff happen all the time. You'd be like, everyone get in this line if you're this, this line if you're not. And then people were like, eh, hey, what are you? <laughs> I am so... I, I've mentioned this before, but I'm such a consequences person. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That I like, I am constantly looking for instructions. Oh yeah, no, I, I don't. Too. I do I'm not like... want to go rogue. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. So we've mentioned the role playing games and stuff, right? Right. I I cannot help but to identify myself as a lawful neutral person. Okay, not lawful, 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 lawful. Lawful good. Lawful good. Sorry. So, and the reason I say neutral is because even if it's a bad rule, ah. I'm still probably gonna follow it, for the most part. Like, there's some things that you know, obviously not. But um, by yeah. that, I mean like if I see a sign that says "Please keep off the grass," right? I'm gonna I'm gonna walk on the sidewalk, and I have seen that sign so much that it hurts me to walk across grass if there is a sidewalk, even if there's no sign. Yeah, most of the time I I struggle with not wanting to like disobey rules and then recently <laughs> i've been like i'm gonna start disobeying rules <laughs> <laughs> no but like different ways like not 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 following instructions but ones that i'm like okay there's not probably not a point for this um but uh... they're they're always a point it's actually a funny thing um or the grocery store with the one-way things now if you wonder why yeah oh if they're if the store's empty i'll go against it but if there's like there's people in the store i'm like well i face it i face a personal dilemma because it's like you need to go this way but on this end of the aisle, I need something on the other yeah, end. Yeah, but I also found and out why that stocking. happens. And they're stocking on this end of the aisle. And I can't get around them. So I have to, like, I have to get there somehow. I can't leave my baby in the cart in the middle of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm going to have to go the wrong way. And then I'm facing this moral dilemma of I don't, you know what I mean? It's like, oh. Yeah. There's like, a reason though, those those are there oh. now. Like, I didn't, I didn't really feel like it was a big deal until I think I was shopping a few days ago. And two people went against it. And I was like, ah, we're all stuck. Move. <laughs> and I'm like, now I know why these signs are there. Well, if they put them up for COVID to try to yeah, reduce the were... space with everyone. But I think they should but, be there always. But this actually, if there's, <laughs> this actually brings up another funny point though. If there's a weird rule, the reason it's there is because some idiot broke it. When I was... During um, <laughs> residence life in college, we had a rule written to our handbook, do not put large objects in the toilets, like tennis balls and other items. The reason is people put tennis balls in the toilet and raccoons. 
The, the, okay, tennis balls, sure. 18-year-olds who are fresh out of mom's house, whatever, they're stupid. The raccoon. There's a reason those rules are there. That's a new one There was for a me. rule for no carnivorous fish for a reason at the school. People had carnivorous fish. Fish. Carnivi- carnivorous fish. Fish. Frishes. Frishes. Frish. Oh, wait, I just, you know, it's, and you see a lot. Well, I mean, that's just people making really poor decisions, like with the do not operate chainsaws with your genitalia. I have never seen that. You've never seen that warning label on a chainsaw? No. Oh, okay, well. But I can understand why. Yeah. Some idiot did it. Some Somebody did it. So that's a little, that's not, not following instructions. That's just people getting really creative in ways to do things that they really shouldn't do. Um, <laughs> it, following instructions, though, I, I feel like it's something we start in primary school. Everybody come in line. Stand in a straight line, follow the leader, put your bubble in your mouth, you know. But what's weird is we're really bad at it. Like, we're all conditioned to follow instructions, but we're terrible at it. Well, I think part of that might just be because when you're younger, that's all you have to do. Like, you're just, it's ingrained in you that you have to follow these instructions, and then you become an adult, and you don't, you know what I mean? Suddenly, your instructions become a little more. Yeah, no, kids don't understand the instructions either really well, too. Well, but they're. I'm thinking about, like, teenagers. Who had plenty of time to condition, and they're just yeah. Bad but they're getting they're getting to the age where they can make their own decisions and stuff. Dad, come on! It's, they make terrible decisions. Well, they're teenagers. I have yet to meet a teenager who made good decisions. I've met some teenagers who made good decisions. Yeah, they're rare. No, no, they might make one good decision, but if you take all of the decisions people make over those, we'll call it five years of teenagedom. And you put them on a scale of good decisions, bad decisions. I promise you, everyone's gonna have more bad decisions than good decisions. I disagree with that point, but <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> <it's hard to laughs> because teenagers are teenagers. My husband was an absolutely wonderful teenager, in my opinion, based on what he's told me. I don't know. I'd have to talk to his mother, but he still made more bad decisions than good decisions. You know, mm. um, I'm at the point now at, with you know our daughter. I'm instructions are important and that's how we keep everybody alive. (laughs) Yeah. Sometimes (sighs) following instructions is actually really important and I'm thinking of I can't think of any specific instance of this but there are definitely cases and I think I was what was it one time I was listening to an audiobook about the Korean War and there was something about like a general couldn't Someone couldn't get through the line because they wouldn't let the person through. And they were being really efficient about it. And everyone was following, was being very diligent about it. And it saved the entire company's life because they wouldn't let anyone in. They, it, they, all their centuries were awake and they, like, they were vigilant. And it saved their life. And I'll, it, in the moral of the story on that one was like, they followed the rules and like <laughs> everyone survived because of this. And I was like, yes. And I can't think of any good examples of that, but. Can you imagine how bad it would be if everyone decided that they didn't want to follow the rules while driving? I mean, I know people are really bad about following the rules, but like completely <laughs> to stop following the driving rules. Driving is the number one instructions it's, violator. Like we go, people go to jail when they miss, uh, don't follow. And I think that's one reason why people are generally okay at following the main rules, even if they don't follow the little rules very well. Ah. Uh... Like driving on the right side of the road. Oh. And... Okay. I mean, have you seen the, the idiots in cars for Reddit? I've seen Sub idiots Reddit. for cars. Yes. Yeah. And so uh, you you see stuff, right? right? I mean, it's on the internet. It's not super popular. Like it happens every day. For the most day. part, I don't see many people driving. I've only recently run into one person driving down the road, wrong direction of the road. Uh, there's a road out here that runs in front of the office. Mm-hmm. Right. So there's it goes one way, mm-hmm. and I've had people turn on that one way to come up. In the past three months, I've seen three people do it. Ah. Just right there at that major intersection. They just turn and then they, I, I, I and I'm like, I'm looking at my husband and like, you know, patting him like, I, we are, we're, we're sitting here. Like, so either this person stops or, you know what I mean? We can't really go anywhere. So we're kind of just SOL until something mm-hmm. happens. But, um. But what I'm saying is like, for the most part, people follow that rule. But if they didn't. <laughs> It would be chaos. Well, instructions are, Anarchy. Instructions are there, one, to make sure whatever task they're being given for is accomplished mm-hmm. and accomplished fairly well for whatever task it's supposed to be, whatever the goal is. 
And I think two instructions are so that everyone is doing the same thing to reduce the chaos, right? Like you mentioned for driving. That would occur if everyone just did whatever they wanted to, irregardless of the directions that they've been given. Um, there's, I mean, there's instructions that you can ignore if you really want to. So I think, the, I'm thinking about like with instructions, I guess the, there's two different, as I said, there's two ways that people are that either they, they just didn't want to listen or it just is not clicking. And I don't know why it doesn't click sometimes because I'm thinking about like, there, I mean, there's there's a blatant disregard for the rule, the, the instructions. I'm thinking about all the, it's it's a male stereotype mostly where you're like, here's the instruction book. And they're like, I'm going to put it together anyways. I don't, anyways. Need, and like, I don't need directions I don't need directions. Get where going. Yeah, yeah, I don't need directions. And like, that's, I think that's part of the Ikea furniture sort of mess. And that's why so many people say it's so hard. It's because they aren't reading the instruction books to put it together. They're just like, I'm going to put it together. Hmm. Wonder why that looks I wonder weird. why that looks bad. Because uh, Brooke screwed in the screw and it came out the other end of the wood. Because I put it in at an angle. Uh, I, there's just something like people don't want to be told what to do, maybe. Right. And they want to maintain their own to- autonomy. I don't know. Um, I just think like there are, there are places and there are times that instructions are important and you should follow them. For example, on an airplane, if you're going to crash, you really want to make sure you paid attention to the safety instructions. When you got them, so that you know what to do in case of a crash. There was actually, there's an example I'm thinking about, um, about that, that I don't know if you ever read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. Those book series. So those are hilarious books, <laughs> sci-fi comedy, and they're by, like, they're, they're sort of the Monty Python style comedy. Um, and then one part of one of the books, there's a guy, he's like flying in a space craft, and He's really bored while he's flying, so he reads the instruction manual, and then the spaceship goes down, and he's the only survivor because he had read the instructions, and I was like, ah, reading the instructions, my Saved guy. your life. Well, uh, and it was a lot really of people, funny. like, it's such a stereotype now, and people always refer to this, but when the plane starts to go down, if the oxygen masks fall, you secure yours first before helping people around you, and there's a reason for that, right? And now it's, people refer to that so often that I think everyone should have that ingrained, Mm-hmm. Um, even that so much that if you're put in that panic situation that you know that's what you need to do. Um, but a lot of people don't know about the flotation device in the seat in case of a water landing. You know? Or um, the the exit rows. You know what I mean? Nobody really knows which exit's closest to them because people don't think to look behind them. Even though you're instructed before the flight takes off that there's three exits. And if you're in the back... Go to the back one. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a, ac- so there's something to be said about drills. Drills clear up miscommunication mostly, most of the time. When I was working at the school, we had to do a lot of fire drills. We did an awful amount of fire drills. But we also <laughs> had to do a number of like uh, other drills, like violence drills and stuff. Like So we had to do a lot of those. And so it became like... It got more and more ingrained, but like the first time we did the drills, it was just like, this would have been bad if the situation happened. And that's why drills are important, but that's also why instructions are important. And like, I'm like, Argh! If you follow, if you follow, follow instructions, not following instructions, the first time, uh, you know, things usually end up pretty well. Unless, I don't know, unless someone's pulling your chain and trying to get to you. But no, I think, I think something should be said and we should just review as adults, as grownups out in the world. Um, that yes, instructions are a thing and they're a thing for a reason and we should, when appropriate, follow them. So I'm actually, there's, there's actually some interesting things about instructions. So let me talk a minute to writing instructions or giving instructions. There are lots of ways to be clear. And this is just, this is just normal advice for writing too, actually, in case you didn't know that when you write a paragraph or something, there are sentences which are unnecessary. You remove them. That's how it works. Also, you give your main point first. Subjective that's. Right? So you write what's called a topic sentence for a paragraph. That's the one that tells you what the rest of the paragraph is. That's what instructions are like. You write the first thing, and then you move on to the next. Chronologically, usually is the best for instructions. Because you need to follow it. Now, that's point when you put in bullet points or numbers. There's actually an interesting thing that's showing up in business world now. Um... And it's a type of email writing where you write this, not like only a subject line in the email, but you write the most important thing they have to take away from your email 
right at the top before you even greet them. It's written right at the top is like, do said so and so in the most clear words they can, and then they write the body of their email. So that's actually a military. It's a military thing. thing. And they put and whatever so whatever the purpose of the email is. It's a purpose, right? Not just what it's about, but the purpose. What right. is the call? Basically, the call to action on this. Exactly. In the subject line. And then you can write a greeting if it's necessary. Depends on how cordial. I mean, obviously, in the military, not everything's going to have that. But you do your greeting. And then you keep the body as concise, as clear as possible to expound upon the call to action that is the subject line with the instructions. And I always needed. just laughed when I was told this about these things. I was like, that's literally a topic sentence. <laughs> I was like, what is wrong with people? And I'm so happy the military brings it back and giving it a new name or whatever. And it's like, it's beginning to trickle, trickle, in, trickle, See? trickle, trickle, trickle is the word. T-R-I-C-K-E-L-L-E. Yes, that's the one I'm thinking of. It is making its way into business world, and I'm happy about it. But I am not happy about how badly worded so many things are. Like, uh, you get an email, and you have no idea what you're being told to do or what you're asked to do. And it's just frustrating. you got to be clear. Well, instructions are really unique because, uh, for one, if I try to give my husband instructions, right, uh, especially at home, he gets a lot of the thing with the thing with the thing on the thing to the left, right? Anyone else outside of that situation is going to be completely lost. Mm. But because we're, you know, we're married and we've been together for so long and we're obviously talking about a very specific item or whatever, he's going to be able to follow all of that to get there. Um, I'm not there yet. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely been told to go get the thing and I'll come back with the wrong thing. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite is like um, you'll see a lot of people joke about it and be like I lost the remote and I couldn't find it my wife was asking me what was wrong and I told her I couldn't find the remote and she offered to come help and I told her no and then after about 10 minutes and I was getting furious she just comes in and goes right to it um, that you know those kind of things are super fun because my husband will be like you know where's I don't understand where's her where's her binky and I'm like uh it's on top of the the counter next to the thing it's on the left over by the oven or something like that. And, um, you know, he's got to be like, what? you know what I mean? So he gets, he has to put together all of these other pieces of information to figure out what the thing was so he could go to the left of that. That actually speaks, though, to an interesting point about instruction is context, right? Yeah. You want to give context. That's the, thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Because it's context. like, well, if, you know, if I were to tell you that, if you came to my house and asked me where the dishes were and I tried to give you instructions like that, you would be absolutely lost. Mm -hmm. um, which is why most of the time I'm like, make yourself at home. Generally, I'm trying, I try to be very clear. Someone's like, where's, where's the cups? I said, count furthest to left. And then they're like, opening, I'm like, left, left, left. I said, <laughs> furthest, furthest to, to the, the left. left. <laughs> I, I curtail all of that. I am super Southern. You come to my house, you're at home. You can look for it. I don't care. Open every cabinet. Find whatever is in there. Associate yourself. Familiarize yourself. And don't ever ask me any questions. So I try to be, I generally try to be really clear with things that I'm asking for. Someone at, was getting like to go orders for uh, Chick-fil-A recently. And they were like, what do you want? I said, two sandwiches. They're like, okay, fries. I said, no, just two sandwiches. And they're like, drink. I said, no, just, just two sandwiches. And they're like, okay. And I was like, I just, I told you two sandwiches. When I started dating my husband, we were talking about something. He's like, do you mean this? I was like, no, what did I say? I said this. I mean exactly what I say. There is no implied or assumed or it's verbatim. If I say this, this. Now, obviously it's been a couple of years and that has changed a little bit because I just don't want to put the kind of effort into making sure that I'm saying exactly what I mean to say. <laughs> right, so that's that's an important thing to be considered with context, though, is would they know that's actually what you mean? Because sometimes when someone says, like, what do you want? They'll say, oh, I want a sandwich. They actually mean, I want a sandwich, it's side and a drink. You want the combo. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so, like, that's what they mean when they say, I want a sandwich. Yeah. But sometimes that's not what people mean. And so, like, it is important to understand the difference between the people. And so it's, it wasn't really a fair example. Like, if I had asked for just, like, a sandwich... And they and I had actually wanted the rest, and I had just said sandwich. I would probably have been a little bit annoyed with myself, but I also probably been kind of annoyed. I'm like, hey, why didn't you ask me about the rest of the stuff? I didn't yeah. have the rest of the things. But that is a situation where like the context does matter, and so when you're writing an instructions field and such, one, as I said before, you write the most important thing first and the first thing first. I don't know why I have to feel like I have to say this so much, but I think it's because writing instructions, oh, writing instructions for students was the worst. 
I, I don't know. I've written a couple of SOPs, mm-hmm. and I don't follow traditional SOP format. I write it like if I were to be showing you, if I were to be walking you through it, sitting next to you, and we were going through the program, if I write the SOP for the program, I'm going to verbatim write what I would be saying to you instead of traditional SOP. And then I'm going to put a screenshot of whatever it is in it. And that's just because I feel like with some things, it doesn't matter how much you put in an SOP, people can't take what's in what's on paper and put it what, you know, they can't correlate the two. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's a lot less like... Yeah, well, what I didn't understand was like with my instructions, I was... <laughs> Oh my goodness. I had to like color code instructions. I was getting frustrated with students a lot with, um, like there was, a, I forget I exactly what happened, but there was a time I gave a test and I was like, write your name here. And then I had like the questions and no, I, I put the instructions to the questions over the questions and the students, all of them, they go straight to the question. They don't read any of the stuff. I, in fact, that was actually a big frustration was the fact that my, they never write their names. And so I couldn't figure out whose test was whose. Mm. And it was like, I said, write your name here at the top. But there was times when I'd be like, do your question, like, blank is how you do these questions. And then you would just go straight to it. And I remember one person came to me and he's like, well, I got these wrong. And I was like, because you did this wrong. And they're like, <laughs> you didn't say that. I said, yes, I did. It's, it's in the instructions right it's, there. It's, it's like in bold. I and they're like, that's not in the actual number to like questions. I'm like, I didn't have to write. I wrote it in the instructions. That's a, that's a completely different conversation that I 100% blame on No Child Left Behind, by the way. Um, I do too. <laughs> but so, so essentially when it comes to instructions and the reason we felt this was important is because even though you are a grown up. Or maybe you're becoming a grown up, or you don't feel like you're a grown up, but legally you're considered a grown up. Instructions are still important, and you should still be on the lookout for them and following them. You read the instructions beginning to end, and <laughs> I have actually, I think I've done this where I've been, I've written like if you read instructions like did do this blank thing and you'll get extra points, and no one did it because they just couldn't follow the instructions. They just didn't want to no read one it. reads them. It's like, it doesn't take that long to read the instructions. Come on. Just read the instructions. Well, yeah. Because, it, like, I'm sure everyone's seen those examples where, like, they tell you to flip to the back. Yeah. Like... My my high school English teacher, my freshman year, did that to us, where it's like, take this test. But, you know, she said, listen, it's like the first day of class. You're taking a test. And she's just trying to get over the importance of following the instructions. And it's like these silly... Um, I call it like a gotcha game, right? Like, ha, ah, gotcha. Um, it's like, okay, write your name on this piece of paper, flip to the back, go to the last question, don't answer it, draw a turtle or something like that. I mean, it's something like really weird. You would not have gotten it just doing the questions, right? You had to read the instructions to get there. Um, when you're done, raise your hand. That's it, right? Uh, well, that's to see if you read the instructions and I feel like that's fine. But I'm one of those people who's like, read step one, complete step one, read step two, complete step two. You know, I don't read them all the way through. Um, so, it, you know, it takes I don't think a I longer. ever did this. I think I would remember if I did, but there, I've definitely heard many instances where someone has done that with their instructions where like, if you re- read instructions, go to last question, answer and hand in test immediately. And like one person will do that and they'll bring it and they'll put it down and they'll go sit down and you'll just see the rest of the class like scribbling away at their answers. And like as a teacher, sometimes you're sitting there going, why are, why are you all doing this? Well, and when that happens, this is this is why I think the teacher I had did it the other way. It's because when someone gets up and, you know, like they're done that quickly, mm-hmm. I'm a pant like, I'm starting to figure out why they had such an easy time and maybe I'm taking so long mm-hmm. because I feel like I know all the answers to these questions. Did I miss something? What's going on? And so then I get distracted and it takes me even longer. And then I see other people like started, other people noticed it. Started, and so and you see everyone start to piece it together and there's like a mm-hmm. two to three minute time lapse. But no, I think. Um, the only I, things that were like, they always followed or usually followed well were like the big state tests, like SAT style stuff. They generally got that one because our instructions are stupid. Like we have a book we have to like read out and we're like, and they are conditioned, heavily conditioned to do it right. And so well, okay. we saw few issues with that. No Sometimes, though, behind. there was occasionally times and I'll be like, why'd you put your name there? It's like no child <laughs> left behind. Yeah. Oh, it's, oh, it's, uh, it's, 
Anyways, so essentially, just again, if you're considered a grown up in any kind of way, shape, or form, or you're not, or you're you not, you still follow instructions. You follow instructions. Yeah, there's no reason not to. Uh, it, and it and they, and that comes with like, everything. And if you don't follow instructions, maybe there's a reason why you're like you actually disagree with it. it that's a different thing. But most of the time, you just <laughs> yeah. follow. Don't follow them because it's like it's like you don't understand. Why? Why do you not understand? Like, what? What? Where's the disconnect? You know what? If you don't understand instructions, ask. Yeah, that's great. That's a good thing. Yes. And perfect. I think I think that's well where we're, we're in it because we could go about all day with the frustrations. Exactly. So, yeah. if you don't understand questions, just ask. Just if you ask. need to write them, write them clear. Write them concise and make people know what you're saying. Thanks so much for watching or listening. If you're on one of the other podcast platforms, and I hope you have a really great day. Until next time, bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Humans Over Numbers podcast brought to you by Milestones. If you found it informative or entertaining, please like, subscribe, or leave a comment or review. I'm your host, Felix, and until next time.